Can you explain quickly mm -hmm. what happens once you kiss a card? You in, you are somebody, you are a, a real buddy. But with the tongue though. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Goes along with chowder, Parker House rolls, and mustard pickles. If your fish smells like fish, throw it the f out, because it's gross. The inspiration for this meal is being a maritimer, it's my blood. Growing up in the Maritimes, going to Prince Edward Island to visit my grandfather, my grampy. He used to make a chowder that would knock your socks off. My grandfather, he was a chef, you know? When he retired, he opened up a great restaurant called the Blue Goose Restaurant. And, you know, I miss my grampy. This is a medium dog. <laughs> First of all, you gotta go find a whole cod. Once you find a whole cod, you gotta bring it home and you gotta butcher it. <laughs> Have fun with that. Come on my boat as we sail into the ocean. I'm gonna show you people at home how to properly fillet a fish. I remember the first time that I wanted to impress my grandfather by butchering a fish. I literally butchered this salmon like a and My grandfather said, I've never seen a fish get killed twice. We are gonna make a fume for our chowder. A fume is a fish stock. This cod is a five to six pound cod. You can see that there's gills in here. So just take your scissors, make a little incision, and you can cut the gills right out. There we go. Because you don't want to put this in the fume. This will make it really murky. We definitely don't need the gills. OK, I want to get as much flavor as I can out of this head. And you can see in here, all of this fat in here, the beautiful meat is gonna make an amazing stock for our chowder. So I'm just gonna put this in here for now. We're gonna take our knife and we're gonna run it down the spine. So we have two fillets and use your bones as your guide. We're just gonna take the skin off it. So just make a little incision, hold it with your thumb and your index finger, and then you just pull the skin towards you. What's the hardest thing about filleting a fish? Not it up. Plain and simple, it takes time, it takes a little patience. So see this line right here, right down the middle? If you don't want to pin bone it, you take your knife and you just cut along the side of it, and then you go along the other side. So then here we go. All the bones are just right in here. Nice and easy. That's a lot easier than picking all those bones out, I must say. We have beautiful little fillets. You guys can do this at home. Or you can just buy fillets as well. <laughs> Don't buy frozen fillets. Don't buy fillets that are already on display. Bust the, that fishmonger's balls and make sure that they fillet a fresh fish for you. I want nice little chunks. So I'm just gonna cut perfect big thumb size pieces because that will cook really nicely. So we can put this in the fridge for now. We're gonna make a fume. We have a little bit of scrap, the split cod head, and the skeleton. Making the fume is just a great way of using all of the fish. You know, it can't just all be cream. It has to be broth from a fish or shellfish and cream together. That's what makes chowder. Eight cups of water. And you want to make sure that you start with cold water because with cold water, as it comes up to a boil, all of a sudden the top is going to fill with this bubbly kind of scum. We're going to ladle that off. If you don't remove the scum, it will become very murky and gross. It's not a good vibe. Make sure you skim your scum. I'm just going to take an onion, place that in there. We're going to take one stalk of celery. Leek, cut that up into large chunks. 
Beautiful. We have some fresh bay leaf. I'm gonna just put two of them in there. We got some parsley, give it a rip, throw it in. A couple thyme sprigs, take it, throw it in. One clove of garlic. All of those vegetables, all of those aromatics, herbs, and spices, just elevate it and make sure that you have um, a full-bodied fume. We're good for now. We got about 45 minutes for this to cook and then steep, so about an hour. Done. I'm standing in front of my favorite seafood restaurant ever, Honest Weight, and the guy behind it, the owner and operator, John Bill, is a living legend. And he's gonna make me a beautiful, creamy chowder. Let's go. Like a chowder pretty much is cream, shellfish or fish, and potato are like the main three ingredients. Yes. Yeah. Every house in the Maritimes has a different chowder. Absolutely. For me, it's all about shellfish. Right. In New York, back in the 50s, there was a famous chef, Pierre Franey. Okay. Plaza Hotel. He made this special chowder for this guy, William B. something or other. He was a big, right. rich dude. William he B. He called it Billy B. Soup. Billy B. Soup. And it was like mussels and the mussel broth and cream. It was super simple. And actually, back in the day, because the mussels all had pearls and sand yeah. in them, grit in them, right. they actually tossed the mussels. They just kept the juice. Okay. So the rest they just used it just, the for, just recipe, for the liquor. Like, literally just the juice, throw the mussels away. Amazing. The key, man, is fresh stuff, yeah. right? And that's the beauty of it. If you have good stuff, you're just going to make it simple. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a bit of clam juice and clams from BC, the mussels, the mussel juice, potatoes, a little bit of mirepoix, right? Yeah. You know, fennel. So celery, no carrot. Onion. No carrot in nope. it. No, I know. Radical. What about an asshole that would throw in, imagine, a, a, a red pepper? Like, <laughs> Should we go eat those yeah, soups? Yeah, let's do it. Let's go eat some chowder. Chow down on chowder. Chowder. What do you think, man? Come on. It's perfect. I love the fact that you don't have like a roux, and it's not heavy, it's light. Everyone knows about commodity beef and free range chickens. But with fish, it just seems, because it's in the ocean, because it's in the lakes and the rivers, it's just not seen. As much as it's important for consumers to start asking for good stuff, the industry has to be there too and provide that, make it easy. I just say, thank God there's no carrots in this chowder. I don't like carrots in that. Don't put carrots in your goddamn chowder. John Bill will come to your house, kick down your door, scissor kick you. Pick them up one by one, then I give you back your chowder. We're on the right side of life right now, you know? Exactly, bro. Simple little, things. If you've got a bowl of chowder in front of you, John Bill across, life's all right. Cheers, man. Cheers, buddy. Now I'm gonna stimulate you with mustard pickles. Mustard pickles are seasonal vegetables in a pickling liquid and mostly seasoned with ground turmeric. It adds flavor, it adds crunchiness. I love serving it with, you know, something like a chowder. We're gonna add one cup of sugar, one full cup of sugar, two cups of vinegar, two cups of water, we're gonna add this much salt. That's about four tablespoons. So I'm just gonna move this pot. Now, this is gonna boil nice and slow. So we're just gonna add two tablespoons ground ginger, three tablespoons ground mustard, and all of this turmeric. That's about six tablespoons. We're gonna add just a little bit of celery seed. Not too much, because that shit is crazy. Look at this color. And this is exactly what you want. Oh my God. Ah. Whoa! That tastes like my childhood. My grandfather, he had this amazing garden and every summer he would take all the vegetables and he'd make a giant mustard pickle. His mustard pickles are so good. These are pearl onions. So I'm gonna take the pearl onions, look. We're gonna put those in whole. We're gonna take the red pepper, just take the seeds out. Every dinner, I think, that I grew up having either had mustard pickles on the table or like pickled beets. Red onion. Green beans, we're gonna leave it rather big. 
I want to add a leek. I like a lot of onions in mine. Just crack some garlic. We got the cucumbers. I love it, chunky. Cut a head of broccoli in half. You just cube it. We're only gonna need about like a quarter of this cauliflower because there is a lot of mustard pickles going on. I need a bigger bowl. You can serve mustard pickles with anything, man. You can brush your teeth with mustard pickles. It's the greatest thing ever. So this is boiling the pickling liquid. I'm gonna turn this off. This is good. So quickly, we're just gonna mix all of this up. Oh, mama. We got a little jar here. I'm gonna take the veggies and drop them all in. Look at all the flavors in here. Oh my God, this is beautiful. This is ready in 24 hours. We can put this in the fridge for now. That's how you make mustard pickles. Now we have to make the base of our chowder. Oh, look at this. This is amazing. Beautiful single smoked bacon. Let's begin. So we're gonna cut our bacon into little cubes. A big tablespoon of butter, a little olive oil. Turn it down on low, just enough to get this bacon cooking. So as that's rendering, we're gonna cut our leek. We're just putting in all white veggies because we want our chowder to be white. I like the chowder white because it's clean, it's nice. Don't put carrots in it, you don't put yams in it, you don't put anything that's cream. Like a chowder should be white, period. So one stalk of celery, an onion, and now it's good to go. You don't even have to use bacon in this because I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that are pescatarian or vegetarians that eat fish or whatever the you wanna call yourself. So if you wanna just use olive oil, you certainly can. We're gonna cook this slowly, wilt this down. It's gonna be perfect. Visiting PEI as a kid in the winter is like visiting the Arctic. It is a small little island and it is cold, nasty little winters over there. And meals like this are essential to keeping the morale up on the island. So our vegetables and our bacon are all wilted down, nice and buttery, the bacon fat working in there. The fume, we only cooked this for about 45 minutes. So I'm just gonna turn this off. Beautiful. Get a little strainer. And now we're gonna just pour this through the strainer so we don't have any chunks. Bring it up to a boil and then we turn it down real low. This smells amazing. No chowder is complete without a PEI potato. The PEI potato is the golden standard. It's the best potato in the world. It's the best soil in the world and it's the greatest, it's, PEI is like the greatest place in the world, man. And these potatoes in our base are gonna add a little starchiness to it and it's gonna help thicken it up. How do you guys feel at home? Following along, learning? I'm here sweating to death for you. you now I get to show you how to make a perfect Parker House roll. It's just like a perfect, kind of like crunchy on the outside, nice and buttery. That sea salt, crunchy, inside is just soft. It's like homemade Wonder Bread. It's just like a soft, crunchy, not even that crunchy, it's just soft and hot and buttery and it's good, man. The first thing we need to do is activate our yeast. This is dry active yeast, this is one packet. Get it all in there. A quarter cup, just tap water. We're just gonna add a little bit of sugar and that needs to stand for about 10 minutes to bloom, to activate, to come alive, that yeast. My grandfather's rolls, when he passed away, he got like the front page in like the Charlottetown paper or whatever, for PEI. And when they mentioned, you know, what kind of a man he was and all that kind of shit, it's amazing. He was a great man, did a lot for his community. But I always laughed, like they mentioned his roles, you know, John Matheson's roles, man. We got four tablespoons of sugar, two tablespoons of salt, one cup of milk, and we have a bread hook on here if you wanted to know that. 
We have one quarter cup of melted butter. We're gonna add three whole eggs. Two, three. And then we're just gonna crank this up a little bit. We're gonna add some flour, four cups. You always add all your wet and then your dry. This mixer, what is I like to mix my mixer. We would sleep in the booths in my grandfather's restaurant and we would wake up, we'd have these fresh rolls and we put butter and jam on them. Every meal we had a roll. So our doughs come together for five minutes. Oh yeah, this is what you're looking for. Flour your surface. And we're just gonna knead this a little bit. Just knead it away from you and then you pull it back and you kind of like slide it, knead it. Just a little canola oil so it doesn't stick. Boom, that's good to go. Tie it nice and tight. Now this dough is gonna rise. So put it in like a warm place in your kitchen. It'll take about an hour to double in size. And if it hasn't risen in about an hour, your dough's or it's too cold. Look at this bad boy. This has risen perfectly. We're gonna roll this into a rectangle. So it's about a quarter inch thick. And then we're just gonna cut. So now I'm gonna just put butter on half of these and we're just gonna wipe the sides, wipe her down. Take our Parker House rolls and lay them in. The butter envelopes in the Parker House rolls are very important because when you open up that roll, it's just like, there's like that little butter pocket and it's just incredible. Like, the f who doesn't like a butter envelope? Are you mental? Like, what the, f the problem? That is gonna rise again. Half an hour. So make sure you put this in another warm place and this is gonna rise and then it is gonna be good to go. You can't bullshit with baking. If you add a little too much flour or not enough salt or not enough sugar, three, four degrees over or under or, baking is crazy. Or it's not crazy, it's just like, it, it's scientific. My brain is not made for baking. Look at these little scrumptious little blankets of joy. I'm gonna make an egg wash. We're gonna add an egg. We're just gonna paint, oh mama. Egg wash makes it nice and golden brown. Now we're gonna add some sea salt, go down to the sea, grab some salt and lots of sesame seeds. I'm gonna put these in the preheated oven at 350 for 45 minutes and these are gonna come out golden brown. That's gonna be delicious. This chowder, look at this base. The bacon, the potatoes, look at that. That's just the base. We have cream. We are gonna pour all of it. Look at that. Every drip, drip, drop. We do not want this to boil. People can make a lot of mistakes. Yeah, you boil that chowder too hard, it's gonna split and get gross and clumpy and people are gonna be like, what the f am I? And you're like, you're a f idiot, that's what happened. We're gonna just drop our little pieces. Look at this, holy macaroni. This is, this is chowder, buddy. So, this is Napa cabbage. Napa cabbage is very important because it's so soft and it doesn't need to braise like regular white cabbage. It has a real sweetness to it and I think the sweetness really adds to that chowder. In about 10 minutes, this is gonna be done. Food loves, food loves, loves me. Perfect! Woo! Look at these fresh baked goddamn rolls. Do you hear that? Do you know what that sounds like? Victory. Look at this, oh my god. Wow. That's so light and nice. One last final thing. So now, 
we're gonna add a little bit of salt, like two big tablespoons. This one's for Grampy. You put this on in the middle of the winter, someone will die because they're so, they go insane and they kill everyone in the house. Someone eats this and it blows their mind and they have to destroy everyone within a hundred yards because no one can know how good this is. Because then they would want to go in and eat their chowder and they want it all to themselves. This is good. Okay. I'm stoked on this. See all this hard work? Where's my ladle? And Ray! Whoa! Here you go, baby. Thank you, baby. Here, try this. This is really good. Try this. Just the cream. Just try this. Does that bring you home? Very sexy. Look at this. We got some nice chives here. Oh. You sweating, man? Yeah, I'm sweating. That's how you make a goddamn chow. Where's the pickles at? They're beautiful. Right. Mustard pickles. Oh. That sounds like my buddy's bulldog, just breathing. Look at that, mustard pickles. Today, you got a real piece of who I am. A real piece of my childhood. The cod chowder, the mustard pickles, the Parker House rolls, the memories that I've had, and I've passed them along to you guys. I think my grandfather would be very pleased. I've become a little bit of a better chef since, you know, when I butchered that fish in front of him, and Grampy would love that, man. My grandfather's world renowned. My grandfather could beat the shit out of your grandfather. My grandfather could beat the shit out of your grandfather. That should be a whole show, grandfathers fighting each other. That'd be great. Because all grandfathers like are tough for some reason. It's funny, right? Everyone's grandfather was like tough. <laughs>